Hello and welcome to the Hospital Rooms Digital Art School. You are about to watch a paper weaving workshop with East London based fashion designer Sadie Williams. You can find the materials that you need for this workshop listed below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Enjoy the workshop. Hi, I'm Sadie Williams and I'm a fashion and textile designer specialising in print and pattern and colour and I'm really happy to be doing a hospital rooms workshop with you guys on paper weaving. So I just want to show you what kind of led to the paper weaving. So during lockdown I made loads of artworks and I just found it really therapeutic to do that and they're all really pattern based, um, working on checks and different colours. So. That was something that I just did by myself when I couldn't go to the studio in lockdown. Just using things like old pads of paper, like the neon colours, literally using old sweet wrappers and things like that, and uh, old bits of glitter paper. Um, I love metallic, so that's why I've chosen glitter papers, but you can do this as well with just plain coloured papers too. Um, print and pattern is definitely something that I've always loved ever since I was a kid and always something that I go back to again and again and um, yeah hopefully with this you can play and uh, find you know it therapeutic like I do too. Hi there so we're going to be doing paper weaving um, which is essentially just using one base colour of glitter paper uh, like this and then lots of different strips. So I've got them pre-cut here in lots of different colors. I like to arrange them in their color order so it's really easy to see what you're working with and choose which colors are there really quickly. Um, so we start off with some plain paper in a plain glitter or plain colored paper. And this needs to get cut to our template. Um, on the guide uh, with hospital rooms, there's a template um, available which you can download, um, which gives you the size dimensions to cut it down to. Uh, you can use scissors and fold the paper in half. So you can either like print off the guide and glue it to a piece of paper, or you can hand draw the lines yourself and then like simply cut along the lines. They're all just two centimeters wide from each other. And we just end it 0.5 centimeters from the edge of the paper. So at the end, your paper will be covered in slits like that got a pre-made version somewhere like this so you can see the guide here we've hand drawn it onto the paper so it just looks like that then with the strips you might be given loads of strips already but if not just simply draw it onto the back of a glitter paper uh, using a ruler and we're doing them in like one centimeters 0.5 centimetres and two centimetre strips. They're the different dimensions that we're working with today. So you just cut them straight along the drawn lines if you don't already have them made. So that one's one centimetre strip. There's a two centimetre strip, so then I'll just put those with the same colour that I've got ready. Um, other things that we can have today for materials, I find blue tack is quite useful for when you've put your weave together. Sometimes the pieces can move up and down a bit, um, like this. So if you really want to fix it in place, you can just use a little bit of blue tack like this and just stick it down and then it will be fixed into place. Uh, you can also use a uh, Pritt stick to do that, but for the glitter paper I recommend the blue tack because it sticks better. Um, another thing that you can do is use masking tape, simply just rip a piece, make a tiny little loop, and then you can stick that behind too, and that works as well. So the first piece I'm going to start with is quite simple and it's blocks and they're all like counter colour blocks. So it's a bit like a checkerboard, 
but we're just playing with the scale of the size of the squares. So it goes to skinny rectangles here, and sometimes it jumps to bigger gaps and smaller gaps. It just makes the design a little bit more interesting than having a classic checkerboard. So um, for this one, you just need six strips at two centimeters, and then four strips at one centimeter. So if you start at one edge, you literally just feed the strip through one of the gaps and then back under. So you're going underneath, on top, underneath, on top. And then you're switching to go two underneath, one on top, one under, one on top, two underneath again, one on top, one under, one on top and one under. And then I just use my fingers to sort of pull it to the edge of the paper. And then you get your second strip that's two centimeters and you're basically gonna do the opposite. So where you've gone underneath for your first strip, this time you're gonna go on top. Sometimes it's easier rather than trying to do it right next door to do it along a bit where there's a bit more space and then afterwards we push it to go next door. So just doing the reverse of what you've already done. So when you went under twice, now you go over twice. Just get all the way along to the outside. Oh, I've done a mistake there. <laughs> and then just pull it along like that. You do get quite glittery on your hands, but it doesn't matter. And then you're doing the same as the first strip for the next one. I like to have one hand underneath and one hand on top when I'm doing it, and I kind of use my finger to push it along. Might want to spin the paper around as you get towards the other side. And then it's okay if it's on an angle again, you're just going to push it up. Then basically you can switch to the skinnier size next. And it's the same principle, just doing the opposite style for the next one. So you just keep on doing the counter color each time. So it gives that nice clash. If you're doing this with plain papers, I would use like a heavier card um, because if it's too thin, it can kind of get a bit bent and it's a bit harder to handle. Whereas when you've got the stiffer card, it's kind of easier to feed through. So we did it three times with the fat strips that are two centimeters and then with the one centimeter strips, I'm just gonna do four of these. Now this looks a bit tight to fit in the next one, but what you have to do is just start at the beginning again and really just use your fingers or the edge of your nails to just push them along and it budges it right up so that you can fit in your final piece. And then the pieces fit really snugly and they won't move out of position.
Again, this is why it's good to use card rather than paper so you don't rip the pieces when you're sort of handling them. So this is the last one. Sometimes the last one can be a bit trickier because it is a bit tighter, it's more of a squeeze, but you can take your time to do it. Just keep pushing them away from this final piece and you should be able to squeeze it in. When your last one's in, I kind of like to just even it all out again so you don't have one space left at one side. And just visually it makes it look a bit nicer. And then, I just like to pull the edges so that we even at each end. So see where this one's sticking out a bit. Sometimes it's good to just get that piece and just pull it down a bit. So you're nice and even across the whole thing. And then you've got a completed glitter blocky artwork. So this is a blocky sort of checkerboard design, uh, just using two colors and it's quite easy to adapt it. So here I had it with two colors, just pink and orange, but then I switched the outer um, ones to blue and the ones just inside to purple and it gives it a nice sort of tone of colors going across it. So you can always finish your color and then pull them out and swap them or design it so that you've got different colors in there as well. This is a design it's sort of more like chains. Um, so that's just created by going in and out at different um, staggered amounts, basically. Um, but yeah, you can refer to images of these and like copy them online. You can always try like here, I've done two different colors of chains on a gold base here. It's the same color against one single color background. It's up to you how you want to do that. And then these ones are like sort of checks and tartans. So just lots and lots of different layering here. Um, first of all, I sort of went in one direction and then I go in the other direction. And it's more just a case of like working into them rather than having a preset plan at the beginning. Um, that's why the 0.5 strips can be really good because you can add them in afterwards um, and just keep working into your designs. And then this is quite a simple one. It's just a zigzag design. So this example just shows it contrasting glitter paper with matte paper, which can be quite nice. Um, or here's totally glittery where I've got the same design zigzags, but I'm just using three different colors in the zigzags just repeated. So that's something that you can always play with as well. And then finally, here's just a really simple graphic blocky one, which again is just like a zigzag, but in staggered lines. Really easy to do that one as well. I'm Sadie Williams and thank you for joining me. Paper weaving, here's my final uh, contrast color, checkerboard blocky glitter artwork. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy playing around in paper weaving.